Hi, Mark Gordon on Friday, October 28th, 2011 with your Gold, Silver, and Spiders report. This is the GLD, the Exchange Traded Fund for Gold, currently up about six and a quarter percent this week. Uh, you can see we've had a great run. Uh, last week we came down here and retested this lower trend line. I drew a line along the lows here, uh, taking us back uh, to uh, summer of uh, 2010. So this trend's been in place for quite a long time. Uh, you can see uh, uh, that we came right up through the 20 week moving average, this green dotted line, and we're sitting right here on the 10 week, this solid blue line. So, very impressive move. We are coming up uh, here to the upper part of the trend, uh, this upper channel line here um, at about 175 on the GLD. Uh, so, we're only about four or five points uh, shy of uh, what I think would be an overbought zone uh, ripe for some sort of a pullback. Of course, we did get above it here uh, back in August, and uh, um, that collapsed, though, and brought us back down to the lower trend line, uh, a very uh, a big move, about a 30-point move down to that. So um, quickly, uh, things have changed in the gold market. So what does this mean as a trader? Um, well, if you, uh, you know, a trend in motion tends to stay in motion, and the trend is your friend. These are these are uh, well-known uh, axioms in, uh, in the uh, trading world here. So if you take, uh, take that point of view, um, you know, it's very risky here. You could play for a five-point move here, um, or you could just sit it out and wait for a pullback and then uh, take a chance and buy uh, when it gets down to this lower uh, trend line. But uh, quickly, we've turned uh, into um, uh, a very sort of uh, fairly valued or overvalued uh, uh, gold uh, price here. And looking at the daily action on the GLD, uh, we see here uh, this blue line is the 50-day moving average. Uh, the green line is the 100-day moving average. And uh, you can see this lower trend line. We did come down here uh, seven trading sessions ago and just barely undercut that, uh, shaking out some of the weaker holders, but closed above it. So uh, respecting this uh, uh, trend line on the daily chart, you can see us coming back up through the 100-day, coming back up through this red line, which is the 21-day and uh, coming back up here and closing above the 50-day moving average and sitting right on it today. So a very impressive move here. Uh, we see a, a little bit of a, a spike in volume here on our big move. Uh, this came uh, on the announcement of the uh, um, action over in uh, Europe uh, on, uh, on the bailout, uh, or more bailout of Greece. So. Uh, my feeling is is that uh, the European Central Bank <clears throat> and the central banks, main central banks, are committing to an inflationary play, where they're just going to print money uh, that they don't have and uh, bail out to these countries as they continue to follow. So if you follow, if you, if you believe uh, in this scenario, gold has a long way to go uh, to the upside, and um, <clears throat> so. Um, that's sort of the trade that I'm looking at here. Uh, we could uh, easily get back up to these uh, uh, peaks that we made uh, uh, earlier in the summer. But for now, I would think that uh, gold needs to um, digest this uh, move here, uh, either go sideways um, a bit or um, uh, have a nice little uh, reaction backwards, come down, maybe test this 100-day moving average and establish maybe a new uh, uptrend. Uh, so let's see what happens with the GLD. And uh, looking now at silver, this is the SLV, the exchange traded fund for silver. Very powerful move, up almost 12% this week. And uh, broke out of this uh, little sort of uh, a triangle or flag pattern. Uh, and uh, to the upside here, uh, we knew it was going to resolve itself uh, some way, either to the up or downside. These things uh, usually have a powerful move either direction. Um, the bias was to the downside, so this is a very welcome uh, event here. Uh, if you're uh, bullish on uh, on silver and commodities, uh, we are coming up against the 10-week uh, moving average, this uh, this blue solid line here, and also the convergence of the 20 and the 40-week moving averages. So, a um, lot of overhead resistance at about the $36 uh, level up here and the $35 level uh, at the 10-week. Actually, the 10-week is at 34.75, and we're currently at uh, 34.09. So. Uh, not much upside here uh, for uh, possible overhead resistance. So uh, silver needs to uh, possibly put in some sort of a, a consolidation pattern here. And um, uh, I would not be a buyer until it clears uh, these moving averages and gives us some sort of buying opportunity up above that. So silver looking uh, very strong this week. 
And moving now to a daily chart of silver, uh, we can see um, uh, this powerful breakout and um, also the 21-day uh, moving average is now pointed to the upside, uh, which is a, a great sign here. And uh, you can see all this overhead resistance up here, uh, uh, just up ahead. Now, uh, scrolling down to some of our technical indicators here, uh, we can see that the uh, MACD line crossed here uh, back around the 10th of October, uh, which set up a bullish bias uh, on the silver. And we can also see in our slow stochastics, which a lot of traders watch, that we are in the overbought zone here um, so uh, in peaking. So a lot of the momentum uh, uh, may have peaked in, in, the, uh, in the silver trade. These aren't always 100%, so they're just good to look at as secondary indicators. So we'll, not, we'll know a lot more about uh, uh, this trend if it develops on the reaction back and then the subsequent breakout from that reaction. So uh, another wait and see uh, uh, position here uh, on silver as well as gold. Moving on now to the SPY, the uh, exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. Uh, another powerful week. This is the fourth up week in a row, uh, up almost 20% up off the bottom here. So just a very massive move. I read somewhere that it's the uh, biggest um, uh, October will be the biggest month uh, since the 70s. So just a huge move. You get this uh, in, you know, after big sell-offs, of course, the big reaction up. Clearing all this noise in here, uh, moving up past all the uh, key moving averages going into this uh, ground here. Uh, if you didn't have a position on down in here, I'd forget it. I'd let this thing settle out and see where we come. Uh, uh, we're going to be coming up against these previous tops here. Uh, you can sort of see the rounding top, so there could be a case made for, uh, you know, a head and shoulders type situation here. And this is just a reaction of the uh, breakdown of that head and shoulders pattern. So um, another wait and see attitude. Uh, if you didn't get in, uh, you've pretty much missed this. Going to a daily chart of the SPY. Uh, we were in this sort of grinding sideways uh, with the downside uh, bias pattern here. Then we broke out here uh, last week and uh, consolidated above this upper trend line here and then set a new little trend in motion here and uh, broke through that uh, um, uh, earlier in the week and then really yesterday just really powered through uh, getting above the 200 day moving average of course uh, getting support down here at the 100 day this green dotted line so um, S&P 500 showing lots of strength here we do have some great accumulation here especially yesterday and um, uh, Again, if you miss this move, um, you know, your risk is too great. Um, uh, pullbacks would take you back down into this region here, uh, about seven points uh, below here. So uh, let's wait for some sort of a consolidation or a pullback to uh, the lower end of this trend here. Um, you could make a case that a new trend might be developing that pushes you up this way. So uh, let's see what happens on the uh, SPY. And if we go down and look at our secondary indicators, uh, we can see uh, the MACD uh, crossed over here uh, early in October uh, and has been uh, straight up ever since. And then um, the uh, stochastics are, they, they are in the overbought zone. Anything above 80 is overbought. But we have an interesting thing happening here. And um, when, when the stochastics stay, when both lines, the, the red and the black, stay above 80 for more than three days in a row, uh, they're known as being locked in. And this is a very powerful uh, thing. When they're locked in, um, prices can just keep climbing beyond anyone's belief. Now, when, uh, when one of these uh, lines breaks below 80, look out, because a lot of traders will take profits at that point. So if you have a charting service, watch this black line. If it cracks 80, I would, I would basically take your profits, uh, because we're probably going to pull back down to some key support levels. So in all, all three of the markets, the gold, silver, and the S&P 500, um, you don't want to chase these. Uh, you know, they've had some powerful moves. Uh, it, it tends to um, put a lot of euphoria in the air. Everybody's happy uh, that prices are going up, um, if you're a trader. And, um, but, uh, you know, when you're chasing them, uh, you know, you're, you're in a position to get whacked uh, on, on an inevitable pullback. So it's best to uh, to not chase these, and let's wait and see, uh, you know, what uh, what reaction they do have. Do they uh, go sideways? Uh, do they uh, pull back and establish a new uh, trend, or do they collapse back down into uh, 
into the areas they just came out of. Uh, so again, it's just a wait and see. All right, so good luck, everybody.